I'm at the Open Compute Summit with uh, Jonathan Bryce of Rackspace and Mark Collier, both of whom work on the OpenStack project. Um, OpenStack recently had a big conference in San Francisco. Tell us about how that went. Sure. So you know, we get together every six months as a community, and this was the biggest by far that we've, we've had in terms of our design summit and conference. It's really kind of two events in one. The summit is the first three days typically, and it's all the developers and architects getting together to talk about the future of OpenStack and really plan the next release. So we release the software every six months and have these summits to plan the next one. So just prior to this summit, we released the Essex version of the software, and now we're planning on the Folsom release for the fall. So it was very exciting, um, incredible positive energy. We had over 400 developers attend the summit. And then in the latter half of the week, we have the OpenStack conference where we had over a thousand people attend, and that's a much broader spectrum of people. So we have um, you know CIOs and um, companies for, throughout the ecosystem that are really talking about what they're doing to build OpenStack solutions. And we heard from a lot of users like Deutsche Telekom and Radio Free Asia. And we always like to um, give the big OpenStack users a, a voice so we can hear what problems they're solving. And that's that's always one of the most interesting things for me at, at each conference. Um, one of the things I had heard is there's more people who actually have OpenStack in production and have success stories. So yes. is there anything that stuck out in your mind of uh, people who are in production and with live? Yeah, um, we, we had a number of user stories, like Mark said. One of the ones that I thought was, was really interesting was uh, a, a use case that, um, that is being deployed at Argonne National Laboratories, where they are they're actually doing um, scientific computing on top of um, on top of you know these big grid style uh, systems, but they're using OpenStack to control it all, and uh, and it gives them a, a lot of additional flexibility, and they're able to to kind of hand off the uh, the resource management to their users and work on um, on you know a cloud style operations model, but for scientific computing, and and so it's a uh, it, it was interesting to hear them talk about. Um, you know, when you look at the big problems that, that science is dealing with right now, a lot of what it comes down to is computational time and how quickly can we parse through data and get valuable information out of this data. And so by making the way that, that, uh, that we use the compute resources that the scientific community has more flexible, more available, and more highly utilized, then, you know, it actually can increase the flow of scientific knowledge. This was kind of the takeaway that they had. So that was one of my favorites. That's excellent, yeah. Um, today, uh, Lou uh, from Rackspace mentioned that Rackspace itself is um, deploying OpenStack in production for your customers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So um, in our in our public cloud, we um, we have an, uh, our next generation of it is based off of the OpenStack software, and uh, and um, you know we'll be moving all of our, our existing customers over to that as well. Uh, I think that you um, you know if you look at what's really excited about that and really excited about OpenStack overall, one of the big things that's going on is in the networking area. And we have a, a project that was incubated over the last year called Quantum. It's now been promoted to um, to core for the next release. So in the fall, will it will be a, a core networking project, and uh, and it it's it's a it basically takes the concepts of layer two and layer three networks puts an API on top of them, and then allows vendors to plug into that API behind the scenes. So you can control um, just basic virtual networking, hypervisor-specific virtual networking, or even physical networking gear in your data center, all through the standard API that's integrated into the other parts of OpenStack. Um, and, and so we are running Quantum as well in our public cloud. And um, and, and the thing that, that's really great about it is it in, you, know, you can create these networks, VLANs, Real segregation, real you know the, the real networks, but you can also delegate um, the authority to do network creation down to your users themselves, and so this is a huge benefit for for our customers to be able to create networks and attach servers and segment traffic and, and manage things in a much more another way to automate the cloud. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things I heard the benefit of quantum was also about security that you could uh, lock you know intruders yeah. down from different levels. Yes, since it's creating real networks, then you can do the things that you would expect to do on real networks, and you can you can um, you can uh, block you can set up routes, you can block traffic, you can you can run intrusion detection systems, you can do all the kinds of things that you would do on a network because these are these are real networks and they support broadcast and multicast and all the things that, that you'd expect. 
And so, um, so a lot of the existing tools and the existing methodologies, um, you can you can employ them. But again, you get the benefits of the flexibility and the automation and, and tools that hook in over the API. Yeah, I think you know big enterprises are used to having that level of control. They expect that level of control, and cloud computing hasn't given it to them to date, prior to quantum. And so, um, it's it's been one of those those concerns and hurdles that, that you hear about from from big, big enterprises, um, like a lot of the companies that are here at the Open Compute Summit today that are operating at massive scale at big data centers, they're expecting to have a level of control that they kind of had to, to give up before. And so, you know, as Jonathan said, putting some of those, those ability to create these dynamic networks and to create that type of isolation, putting it in the hands of the actual users really empowers big enterprises who have been asking for this kind of control. Excellent. Um, so when's the next OpenStack uh, conference? Great question. So we, we have them every six months, so we don't have the date locked down yet, but it's going to be in mid-October. 